Debate in the House of Commons today ahead of the federal government's budget set to be delivered in fewer than 24 hours. But in an unusual pre-budget twist, we already know a lot of what will be in it after a multi-week pre-budget blitz. The government has already previewed almost $40 billion in spending, about half of which is set to be loans. Despite all that new spending, Finance Minister Christian Freeland is insisting she will stand by the fiscal anchors outlined in her fall economic statement. There are three of them, keeping the 2023-24 deficit below $40.1 billion, reducing both the debt-to-GDP ratio and then also the deficit-to-GDP ratio in 2024-25, and keeping deficits to 1% of GDP by 2026-27. So how might Freeland walk the line of spending without ballooning Canada's deficit? Joining us now to talk about that is former Bank of Canada Governor David Dodge. Mr. Dodge, good to see you. Thanks for making the time. Hi, Vasi. How inevitable, in your view, after what you've seen announced so far, are new taxes? Something doesn't add up. Uh, so I think there's a big question of how much of all that promised spending is going to be booked into this year and next year, uh, and how much is going to be deferred out, out the back end. Uh, I think that's a real question we'll be looking for. Uh, secondly, uh, well, maybe she promised to keep the deficit under $40 billion. Maybe that just won't happen. And then finally, uh, finally, I think there is a very real possibility They'll do exactly the wrong thing and tax the very uh, folks and the very corporations uh, that are going to make the investment that will actually raise income over time. Okay, let's parse apart the last point that you just made because Minister Freeland has been explicit that she won't grow the size of the deficit. So I think that is what has prompted all the speculation around taxation. The only thing she ruled out, and the Prime Minister has done so as well, is any new taxes on the middle class, which is what I think you're pointing to, the concept of either a wealth tax and or some sort of excess profit tax on the corporate side. Those seem to be the two most speculated about. Why, in your view, uh, are those the wrong thing to do, particularly when I think the communication around them both uh, it, you know, might be popular with Canadians? Oh, I'm sure it's popular. No one ever likes taxes. <laughs> Uh, in any way, shape, or form. Uh, and, uh, you know, there's the old adage, uh, don't tax you, don't tax me, tax the fellow behind the tree. And, and <laughs> unfortunately, uh, there is no one behind the tree. Uh, behind the tree is us, and she's going to tax us. Uh, if, if, indeed, she is going to keep to the spending numbers... Uh, which she uh, has promised, and if she's going to keep to the budget deficit. So the right thing to do, because the problem at the moment is we're not investing enough, we're consuming too much, would be the tax consumption. That she's sworn she won't do. And so what she's going to try to do is to do something that will slow down the very investment which is going to raise Canadian standard of living uh, over time, by uh, taxing at the margin uh, 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 the corporations and the individuals that are going to make the investments that will help grow the economy. How are you sure, how can you be sure that that will slow, I think what I interpret from what you're saying is that will slow economic growth? Uh, why? It, it, it will slow economic growth o over the medium term. And why precisely is it? Because... What we need to do is to raise the amount of capital per worker so that we can raise the productivity of individual workers. That's the only way we're going to raise incomes of Canadians over time. Um, and you cannot get there simply by saying, well, we're going to ask Canadians to spend more now. Uh, that will not raise the incomes in the future. In fact, that will condemn us forever and ever to what Canadians feel at the moment, the fact that there has been no real growth in the economy for the past 10 years because we have not made investments in the equipment and the intellectual capital that workers need. Surprisingly, uh, Vasi, 
we in Canada have overinvested compared to every other country, compared to the United States, compared to Australia. Uh, we have overinvested in, in housing, a far too larger share, a large share of our national uh, income uh, and a large share of our savings has gone to housing with the effect that too little has gone to machinery, equipment, and intellectual capital for workers to work with. I do take your point, Mr. Dodge, on the lack of investment on the business side, but I think to play devil's advocate for a second, if the government didn't, uh, you know, in, I don't know if the right word is invest, but didn't address in some capacity the issues around housing, there would be protests in the streets at this point. Like, I I can recall a year ago when they were saying, well, it's not really our jurisdiction, and the, the blowback was fierce, and, and, and it was fast. Well, the way to address it is to increase saving, is to increase saving, but we're moving in exactly in the wrong direction, Bessie. This, uh, you know, I was saying to someone earlier, I think this is likely to be the worst budget since the McKechnie budget of 1982 in the sense of pointing us in the wrong direction uh, as to how we go about raising the incomes of Canadians and actually making Canadians feel better uh, over the medium term. In layman's terms, though, Mr. Dodge, what does, I mean, why is addressing the, the supply side of housing you think going in the wrong direction? Like when you say saving would be a better approach, what, what does that mean to the average Canadian? How do you explain that? Uh, what, 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 so uh, addressing the supply side of housing by removing some of the imperfections in markets that prevent markets from working properly uh, to make proper use of the uh, of the investments that are available for housing, that 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 is fine. But by adding to the demand, further adding to the demand for housing uh, that the government is planning to do, uh, it is not going to solve the problem. Just one more question for you, Mr. Dodge, because we've talked about sort of the intersection between fiscal policy and monetary policy before. We've seen a number of provinces table budget, uh, deficits rather that were much larger than anticipated in Ontario and in uh, British Columbia as well. Uh, the government here is talking about how in the medium to long term, the investments on the supply side will prove not to be inflationary. But in the short term, if you combine those provincial deficits with whatever the federal one, we know it's, it's going to be there in some form or, or another, whatever that is, uh, what Do you think that applies a tangible amount of pressure on the Bank of Canada at this juncture ahead of their next announcement? Uh, yes, um, but but it's the aggregate of demand that, that does it. It's not, not necessarily the very, very specific items. And what we've got uh, at the moment is governments are going out and borrowing, uh, borrowing more which would not necessarily be a, a terrible thing at all uh, if the, that borrowing was uh, being invested in physical and intellectual capital per worker so that productivity would go up so that our national income would go up. So we would actually be producing more in this country, not, uh, not con consuming more. It's very hard for all of us uh, now to, uh, to accept the fact that for the last decade, our standard of living has been going down because we have not been investing. People think this is because of inflation and that the costs are going up. The, the fact is that we have not been producing enough to meet the demands that we are putting on the economy. And that's the problem that Mr. Macklem has to deal with. Uh, he can only do so much. Much of it has to be done through fiscal policy. And fiscal policy, unfortunately, uh, at this juncture, is moving in the direction uh, that will not increase our output. Uh, in fact, what it will do uh, uh, certainly will not increase our output per capita. Uh, uh, what it will do is condemn us uh, as we go forward 
to the very bad lackluster uh, uh, situation we've had uh, since the great financial crisis. It's not all due to this government, um, but since the great financial crisis, we in Canada have been falling behind, and we now feel it. The ordinary citizen, you and I, feel that we are falling behind, that things are more expensive, that the costs are too high, and that's because we have not invested in increasing what we can produce here in this country. I have to leave it there, Mr. Dodge, I'm out of time. I appreciate your time. Pardon me? It's a tough message. It's a very it tough is. message. That's a... uh, and it's not it is popular. Lots... No, that's okay. It's a lot for us to think about ahead of tomorrow's tabling of the budget. I appreciate you making the time as always. Thank you. My pleasure.